folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and right now I'm going to share with you folks how I go about braiding up my gemstone necklaces. I get asked this question a lot, all over social media and sometimes on YouTube. I make gemstone necklaces by drilling holes into the stones I make, sometimes cabs, sometimes pieces that I know are going to be pendants. Sometimes I wait for folks to buy cabajons at shows and then I drill them right then and there and braid them up to make them necklaces. But I make most of my money by making these types of necklaces. I use a simple sinew, artificial sinew, it's a cotton. I used to have this awesome linen sinew. Uh, that's a higher vibration material, but I'm all out of it right now. I have a good friend in India who's going to bring me back some. Sometimes I make them with different color schemes and stuff. These actually don't sell as well as the solid colors do for me. But I don't care. I braid them up for me before I braid them up for what people like, you know? Um, all of these, I ream little pieces of gemstone beads using my little rotary tools to make holes and beads wider so that I can make these awesome little backing beads. This makes the necklaces adjustable so that they hang in all the right places. I'm always looking out for different materials to ream. Some work better than others, obviously. I do a simple little three strand braid. I can double these up sometimes to make like a six strand braid to make a thicker um, necklace if I wanted to. On this bolo here, I doubled up the material to make it thicker. You can do this as much as you'd like. You can double up some and then have one or two pieces that aren't doubled up. This kind of makes a cool little contrast with the colors if you're using different colors. But, um, yeah, today I'm just going to braid up these. I worked these uh, in my gemstone drilling video not too long ago. And they need to be necklaces now. So I'm going to do that here at the KNCE radio station, which I'm about to head out to here soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you folks enjoy, and I hope this helps somebody. It'll be pretty cool to see other folks making these types of necklaces. I actually got into this from my teacher and godfather, Ruben Medina, behind the kachina. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So these are the different sinews that I usually use. I usually have about two or three different kinds of brown and a red, but I'm all out. I reamed up some backing beads to finish these pieces and these pieces. I'm going to start with this little sweetie here. Sweet little piece of Mojave. Alright, so after I pick what color or colors I'm going to be using, it's time for me to cut out some of the sinew. I kind of just eye it, which tends to lead to a little bit of waste here and there. But I'd always rather cut it a little bit longer than a little bit shorter. I didn't bring a knife, so I'm using this weird butter knife, steak knife that was in the Lost and Found. I should have like made a little chart and drawn out how long 
of pieces uh, I would need to get certain lengths. I mean, I've been doing this for years and years, and I still haven't done that. So I just eye it out. Just a little bit of waste. It's not too bad. It doesn't really bother me at all. I cut out three pieces of sinew the same length. I place the two end pieces together like this and I take the middle of the rounded end. After that, I decide which side is my front and which side is my back. This side is a little bit more domed than this side, but this side has a little bit more character. The way I braid these up at the moment it does kind of define which side is the front and which side is the back. I have a lot of customers that don't care, and they wear it whatever which way they feel like it. No complaints. So after you decide which side is the front and which side is the back, you're going to put this loop through the back side of the piece. Like that. And then you open it up. and you put this piece through the stone like that. I make mine really tight so that it looks good. I have snapped my pieces right in half by pulling too tight on more fragile pieces, which is no good. And then I flip it around, find the two ends, and I make knots. I have drilled the hole too big and this whole little string operation has slipped right through the hole or it becomes undone and that's really unfortunate. When I drill a hole too big I try to double up my braiding so that the strands are longer. And it doesn't slip through. But since this is a nice, maybe three millimeter hole, I don't expect that to happen. Make this nice and tight. As you can see here, like I said before, that's more of a back than a front. But for some folks, they don't mind wearing that as a front. So that's the way I get started with pieces where I drill straight through the top. Every once in a while, I'll drill pieces sideways like this, and it's a little bit more easy, a little bit more common sense. Just put the string through and tighten it up on each side. Alright folks, here comes the fun part, and the most labor-intensive part of this whole necklace-making process, the braiding. I'm going to go ahead and fix this to here somehow. I often tell folks that it's easier for me to cut and carve any piece than it is for me to braid it up, or at least that it uh, takes less time. Alrighty. I really enjoy doing this here at the radio station because this cool little headphone holder is perfect for this part. This is probably common sense for a lot of you folks, but I had to learn it, and maybe this will help someone else out. Let me get a little bit closer. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is get these three strands of the braid out and away from each other. And then just like you might have learned in elementary or middle school, one goes over the middle, and then the one on the right goes over the middle there. Then the one on the left goes over the middle, and the one on the right goes over the middle there. And you just keep doing it. I like to apply an even amount of pressure so that the little braids are consistent. If you get a little loose towards the middle or the end, you'll be able to tell because there'll be uh, the little braids will be spaced out a little bit differently. I didn't learn how to do this until I was like... 19, 20 years old, and then I was braiding hungry. I needed to learn every braid I possibly could. Ruben Medina behind the Kachina likes to place backing beads at the beginning of his pieces 
as decoration between here and there of the braid. I'm not going to do that now, but maybe it's a little food for thought. Maybe you're into it. I'm just going to use one backing bead to make this adjustable. All right, folks, that's that side. I'm going to go ahead and flip this around and braid up the other side. Looking pretty good. Definitely long enough. It really stinks braiding up one or two sides just to find out that the braid's not going to fit over someone's head. I got a big old melon head, so I like to make mine a little bit longer. Some of the shops here in Taos, New Mexico actually prefer me to make this even longer because some ladies like to wear this closer to their navel, perhaps. It's kind of always better longer than shorter, and I get a little bit more money for making these extra long. Alright folks, just like before, I'm going to fix this piece to this little hook thing. But this time I will fix it up to the side I already braided. What I do is I wrap it around once and then swoop it through. I don't make a knot because it could be hard to get off. Then I do it again. I swoop it through. And usually this keeps it from slipping, sometimes it doesn't. All right, now I'm gonna braid it using the same three pieces, one over the middle, then the one on the other side over the middle, just like I showed before. All right, y'all, braided at both ends. The only thing left to do is to add the backing bead and then seal up the two ends. I'll do that here in a little bit. Right now, I'm gonna braid up this beautiful piece of picture jasper that I'm pretty sure is from Utah. I have a couple viewers that say they get this by the bucket full in their backyard. Holla at you, boy, send me some. I love this stuff. It takes a fantastic polish, isn't too hard but hard enough. This time I will be using two different colors to show you folks how I go about doing that. I'll be using two pieces of brown and one piece of black, but you can use two pieces of black and one piece of brown if that's your thing. You can also just add one of every color that you have. That'd be pretty cute. But. For this piece, I'm just going to do two colors. Alright folks, now that I did that, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'll line up these two end pieces, find the middle, put the loop through what I consider the back of the stone. All right, and then put that through there. Like this. When it comes to double colored pieces, sometimes I like to make sure that the two colors are a little bit even. Like in this case, I want the black strands to be on the bottom. You might not mind if one is up and one is down, but I kind of like it better this way. You can fix it a little bit after you get it made, but I just find it easier to do it this way right now, like this. And then I will do this, wrap it through, make a little knotty knot right there. Make it nice and tight, not too tight where you snap your piece. Nice and tight. Like I said before, you can adjust it just a wee bit after you've uh, already set it up. That looks fine to me. And then we'll braid her. So 
here's this one, I'll braid it up. Looks a little bit more traditional than some folks might be into. I really like it like this. But like I said before, these do tend to not sell as well as the solid colored pieces. I really enjoy it. All I got left is this piece here. I'll do this one off camera since I'm just going to do it in brown. And then I'll show you folks how I go about attaching the backing beads and sealing off the ends. Folks, so now we have everything braided up. My favorite part of the braided necklace making process, the backing beads. As I showed before, or maybe I'm showing now, I ream these beads with a little rotary tool using my two and a half gallon drinking water container. These were already drilled to like one or maybe a half a millimeter. I make them large enough to fit two of these braided strands, so I guess about six pieces of this sinew. I can make some bigger beads with bigger holes, but I don't want it too big to where the knots can slip out. That's right, I will be making two knots after I get it on there. Bada bing. Bada boom. What I do next before I make those really tight, I hold the piece down and I make sure that they're even. Alright. This next step is a lot easier with a pair of scissors, but I cut off the little leftovers. It's going to be hard to do with this serrated right knife. Alright. And that's that. Usually these are a little bit more even. Some folks actually like the little fuzzy tag at the end. Hangs off the back of your neck. Kind of looks cute, especially when they're even and not all ripped up like that. But I uh, like to tighten it up a bit. I'm going to take these outside and melt the ends and stub them out. When these are on fire, obviously they are hot enough to burn your fingers if you just grab them. So use a little bit of water to snuff them out. But if you're into the um, little frayed ends, that's cool too. I'm going to get beads on these, take these outside after I cut them and melt them up. See you out there. Alright folks, I got all of these braided up. And I got all the backing beads attached. Let me show you one that has a good tag at the back. This one's pretty cute. Some folks are into that, but I'm gonna melt them all. It's a little too windy for me outside, so I'm gonna do it inside. Don't tell anybody. Got a fire extinguisher right here just in case. The wax got me. My fingers are kind of tough, so I don't mind flatten them out like that. Nice. For me, I think it looks a little bit cleaner than having the tags out like that. Go ahead and do one more on camera for you folks, and then I'll just finish them up before I say goodbye. Be very careful not only to br not to burn yourself, but also not to burn down your local radio station. All right, I'm gonna finish up the rest of these. That's that for the necklaces. I'm gonna put them on our radio station mannequin. Show them off to you.
go. So making these necklaces uh, is a pretty good and super simple way to make quick cash with your cabs if you're into drilling them and stuff. I'll show you really quick on how they're adjustable. Some people like them low, some people like them high. So all I do is I pull this up, it's kind of tough to do one-handed. And then I just do a simple little, I wouldn't even call it a knot, just like that. And then I pull the backing bead up into that and it ain't going anywhere. And now, it doesn't hang so low if you feel like wearing more than one or whatnot. It's pretty cool. Anyway, focus is Lapidary Dave. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this was helpful. Go out there and make yourself some braided necklaces. I charge no less than $15 for even the smallest necklace and I almost sell out every time I do a show. Gives you something to do with all those cabs you've been collecting. Anyway, until next time my friends, this is Lapidary Dave letting you know I love you. I'll see you soon.